This is a Cine lens from IRX. It's built like a tank, it's super high quality, and it costs around $1,500. And this is the Panasonic 35mm f1.8, a prime lens that costs around $600. And my question is, can you really tell the difference? In today's video, I'm going to be comparing some footage that I shot both with the 30mm T1.5 from IRX, which is a Cine lens, and the Panasonic 35mm f1.8, which is not a Cine lens, um, to see ultimately whether you guys can actually tell the difference. And also, I'll be shedding a little bit more light on the workflow that comes with Cine Glass and whether ultimately it's a good investment for you and your use case. So if you've ever been curious about Cine lenses and have thought about upgrading once in your lifetime, then hopefully this video should help. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the build quality between Cine Glass and normal glass because I think that's probably one of the biggest differentiators between the two. Um, with Cine lenses, of course, they're gonna be a lot heavier, they're gonna be full metal construction, and they're just built like absolute tanks. And the reason being is because, of course, they are meant for set work. They're meant to be chucked around and used with multiple people on a big team and a big crew and stuff. So these have been built to sort of stand the test of time. Whereas if you take a normal sort of photography lens, it's made for a solo shooter, then, you know, this isn't made to be thrown around. It, uh, you know, needs to be treated a little bit more carefully because it's not a completely metal, you know, bomb-proof construction. Um, of course, you get the benefits of it being lightweight this way, but then again, with Cine Glass, you get the benefits of it being built like an absolute tank, so you can literally chuck it out of your window, and I'm sure it still work absolutely fine. So that's a big difference between the two. Workflow-wise as well, I would definitely say that Cine lenses weren't designed to be used by solo shooters. So if you're someone like me, who is a freelancer that normally works by themselves, and sometimes with very small teams, then Cine lenses technically weren't designed for you. They weren't, you know, designed with that sort of use case in mind. They are definitely more geared towards bigger productions where you might have a focus puller, for example, on set, um, a first AC, a DOP, and all those fancy acronyms that you hear in the film world. So um, yeah, they're definitely for that use case. Um, but that's not to say that solo shooters can't use them. Like I've been using this RX lens for a while now, and I absolutely love it. And I do actually own some other Cine glass that I do use quite occasionally. So it's definitely not like it's not for the solo shooter, but I definitely say that if you were someone that finds themselves shooting alone most of the time, then you probably will find the uh, workflow within lenses a little bit more cumbersome compared to a norm a normal lens. Another thing that people also forget when they're looking at Cine Glass is that actually the focus throw is a lot longer. And what I mean by that is that the actual sort of distance to acquire focus is a lot greater, which is great if, you know, you wanted to make micro adjustments and it's a lot more precise and fine tuned for, you know, pulling focus. So that's good. And that's ultimately why they've been designed that way. But if you are a solo shooter, it means that if you want to rack focus, let's say from the background to the foreground quite quickly, then you're going to be cranking that thing for a while. So now I'm going to show you guys two sequences one was shot using the RX 30mm T1.5 on my S1 Cine rig. So I had V mount batteries, I had a cage, I had focus motors and all that sort of stuff. And then I'll show you another sequence that was shot using the Panasonic 35mm F1.8 um, on my S5 II with no cage and nothing else attached. So a very bare bone setup compared to a Cine sort of style setup to see whether you guys can ultimately tell a difference. Um, what I'll do is I'll label each of them A and B. So you guys have to guess which one is which. I've been mortified, fortified, feeling like a Mordecai. I ain't regular, feel like Jordan wearing 45. Traumatized, victimized, seen some of my dive. Knock you off a base with a bat when them niggas slide. Homicide, genocide, televised, emphasized, perpetuating war. Tell that nigga he gon' pick a side. Hood ties from hood lines, my nigga doing dope lines. I'm running to the cops, that's a big exercise. Uh, don't run into the cops, that's the motto. I don't see it coming to an end like Legato. Get chipped like Sicado, send a wave through the hood, now I'm sounding like Verado. Why you eat bread with avocado? We be trying to die shells before I land out tomorrow. Sounding like a real anthem. Shawty saw my wallet, now she think I think I answer. Whoa, telling me she wanted me to hammer. Trying to get saved, baby, I am not the answer. No, I can never trick, trick, trick. Let's the bitch is my bitch with a kiss on my lips like, ah. Uh. I am not a pimp with a limp, I'm a man with a gift, and I'm doing my shit like, ah! Oh! Tell them other nips, I'm the nip, I'm the man in the city, and my bank account bigger, and my body count bigger, that's without a doubt, I'm a hundred steps ahead. Why is it better quality again? <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it does look better, it definitely looks better, but right now pause this video and go to the comment section and comment whether you thought the cine lens was either sequence A or B, and please don't cheat because I want to see whether you guys could actually tell the difference. 
So when I was editing these sequences together, I was actually surprised at how well the 35mm f1.8 from Panasonic held up compared to the RX Cine lens. I don't even know what this is. It's <laughs> like, more expensive. Like, I'm just thinking they're more expensive and you, you actually lose the image stabilization. Um, and they're, they're, they're a lot more valuable. I don't know. I feel like I'm not a good salesman for it. <laughs> of course, I do think that the IRX lens did look a touch better, you know, a touch more cinematic or whatever you want to say. Um, but ultimately, I don't think it looked over double the price better, if that makes any sense at all. So I still think that value for money wise, the 35mm f1.8 wins. And if I'm being completely honest with you guys, unless you're going to go out and spend, let's say, 10 or 20,000 pounds on, you know, like a Cook Cine Prime set or even, you know, a Zy oh, not a set, you couldn't even afford a whole set with that, it'll be one lens. Um, but yeah, if you weren't going out and spending the big old money on Sony lenses, then maybe, unless, you know, of course, you need it for workflow or to impress your clients, um, the better sort of bang for buck would still be the normal lenses or the normal primes and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys agree with me in that. Um, I do genuinely think that the 35mm f1.8 did look really good compared to this RX lens. At the same time, it's depending on what you're shooting, you know. If it's a small advert for social media, I do think photography lenses have their place, but when you want to step up that production and get to the next level in film and video, you need something that's going to give you the quality. It's all personal preference as well. You know, you do lose image stabilization, you lose autofocus, but when you're using autofocus, you're almost relying too much on the camera and not your own instinct as a filmmaker. So yeah, I still say, you know, there's no point to sort of think about your next upgrade path unless you definitely know you need cine glass um, for your workflow. But otherwise, you'll be absolutely fine with one of these. And please, you know, like let me know what you guys think about this. I know that a lot of the people that watch these videos are freelancers that are doing this sort of work. So let me know what you think about this whole topic and whether you're using cine glass or just, you know, again, regular glass, um, for want of a better phrase or word to describe these lenses. Um, and yeah, and if you guys haven't seen my other videos on this channel, I do make a lot of content around the Elmont ecosystem and the Lumix full frame lineup in general. So if you're into that sort of thing and you wanna know more about getting the most out of your Lumix cameras, then definitely check out my other videos and hopefully I shall see you over there.